The Shianogi Qualicaps Model 10 semi-automatic capsule filling machine manufactured and distributed by Schaefer Technologies. It's the top in its class. Your company understands the benefits of owning the capsule filler with the best reputation on the market. Watching this video, you will learn the features of the Model 10, how to operate it successfully, and how to perform some simple maintenance and repair information. The operation of the Model 10 follows some basic steps. You'll be filling a ring with empty capsules, separating a ring into two halves. The top half holds the capsule's caps and the bottom half holds the capsule's bodies. Filling your capsule bodies with powder, putting the capsule cap and the bottom back together in the closing station, then ejecting the capsules from the rings. As you acquire more experience operating the Model 10, you'll find you can have one, two, even three rings on your table at the same time. When you order your Model 10, you will receive an operations manual, a set of Allen wrenches for installing and changing parts on your machine, a soft bristle brush for cleaning your workstation table, a brass rod and a pick to clear out capsule jams, and a jack handle. You will receive one size-specific set of parts for your Model 10. In order to run additional capsule sizes, you will need their corresponding parts. These are called change sets, and they can be ordered separately. We'll discuss change sets later in the video. The Model 10 was designed for maximum efficiency. First is the capsule hopper. You will place empty capsules into the capsule hopper to begin the process. The capsules feed from the hopper into the rectifier assembly. The rectifier is the part of the machine that orients the capsules correctly. A complete filling ring is placed on the rectifier table. The table will rotate one full revolution while being filled with empty capsules from the rectifier assembly. The vacuum port is located directly under the rectifier table. The vacuum creates a suction to seat the capsules into the rings, thereby separating the capsule caps from the capsule bodies. The powder hopper holds your powder and is located directly above the powder shoe. The auger controls the amount of powder dispensed into the capsule bodies. The filling table rotates one full revolution while the capsule bodies are filled with powder. The closing station securely rejoins your capsule caps and bodies. Finished capsules are dumped over the skag box into the capsule holding bin. The bottom of the skag box is made of perforated metal. Any excess powder or broken capsule pieces are filtered into the skag drawer located under this screen. The controls on your Model 10 are clearly marked. As an operator, you will use the front panel controls most often. The ring counter keeps track of the number of capsule rings you have closed. You have two fill buttons. They are located on opposing sides of the front panel and must be pushed in tandem to start the process of filling the capsules with powder. Older models will only have one fill button. There is an all stop button. This is an emergency stop command. It will cease all operation of the machine. The machine will not start operating again until you pull the button out. The start button sets the rectifier in motion. The stop button ceases rectifier movement. There is an on-off switch for the vacuum pump and a bypass switch. The bypass switch allows the operator to adjust the vacuum without running the rectifier. It can also be used to hand rotate a filling ring to ensure proper capsule separation. There is an auger speed knob, a fill table speed knob, and a rectifier table speed knob. The vacuum adjustment gauge is located outside of the left panel. It allows you to adjust the amount of vacuum under the rectifier table. Inside the right panel, you will find the main power switch. This on-off switch controls the power to the entire machine. It should be turned to the off position at the end of a shift or to isolate the machine for maintenance or cleaning. Finally, because you will be handling it more often than any other part of your machine, your filling ring is perhaps the most important component of your Model 10. It is made of aluminum and is fragile. Be sure not to bang either half of the ring against any of the stainless steel surfaces on your table or against each other. It can easily dent and using dented rings will affect your vacuum and filling processes. 
Now you are ready to run through the basic operation of the Model 10. You will find that operating the Model 10 is similar to keeping a rhythm or a beat. Remember, all of this information can be found in the operations manual provided with your machine. The first step in operating the Model 10 is to turn the main power switch on. Secondly, you will fill your capsule hopper with the correct size capsules and fill your powder hopper full of the specified product you are filling. You will next take your filling ring, top and bottom together, and put them on the rectifier table. To ensure that your ring is seated on the table properly, gently turn it clockwise until the ring hits the guide pins on the rectifier table. Be sure not to turn the rings around too hard. Jamming the rings against the pins can damage the pins and throw the machine's timing off or damage the rings themselves. Once the ring is securely on the rectifier table, turn your vacuum pump on using the on-off switch on the front panel and start your rectifier by pressing the green start button on the front panel. The rectifier loads empty capsules into the filling ring correctly. It rotates the capsules so the larger part of the capsule is on top. We call this position cap up. The capsules fall from the rectifier into the filling ring in the cap up position. The cap is larger in diameter than the body, so when the capsule enters the filling ring, the capsule cap is caught in the top half of the ring. The vacuum then separates the capsules, pulling the capsule body into the bottom half of the ring. Once the ring is full, the table will stop automatically. At an average speed of 750, the rectifier table will run one complete cycle of loading and separating capsules in about 35 seconds. Once the rectifier stops, separate the cap ring from the body ring. Place the cap ring in the easel provided. You will not need it again until you are ready to close the capsules. Make sure the ring is seated correctly by gently turning it counterclockwise until it hits the guide pins on the fill table. Note that you are turning the filling ring counterclockwise, but you turn the rectifier ring clockwise to make sure they are seated correctly. Pass your hand around the top of the ring. You want to make sure the bodies are seated completely inside the holes. The filling shoe can break off any bodies that happen to be sticking out of the ring. To start the filling process, press both of the fill buttons simultaneously. The powder hopper will swing over to fill one complete ring of capsules before it stops. At its fastest, the filling table will fill your capsules with product in about six seconds. When the filling is complete, clear the extra powder off of the ring and rejoin it with the cap ring. Your last step is to close the capsules. Secure the rejoined ring on the closing station's peg ring. Lock it into position. Push the closing station into the machine. Air pressure will close the capsules. When the process is complete, pull the closing station out of the machine and eject the capsules by dumping them over the dust screen and skag box into the capsule holding bin. You will repeat the same process to fill all of your capsules. For your well-being, the Model 10 is equipped with some safety features. It has several key switches that, when tripped, cease the machine's operation. Perhaps the most important key switch for you as an operator is attached to the clear door on the rectifying system. If you open the door to the rectifier while the machine is in use, the machine will cease operation. Key switches are also attached to the Model 10's maintenance panels. You will not be able to run the machine if these panels are removed or are not securely closed. If you are not loading or separating your capsules correctly, you will need to adjust your vacuum and rectifier table speed. Your vacuum controls the amount of suction that pulls the empty capsules into your rings and then pulls the capsule bodies from the caps. If your vacuum is too high, your capsule bodies will break or bounce. If the vacuum is too low, you will not be able to separate your caps and bodies or you will be forced to run your rings over the vacuum several times to achieve separation. To change your vacuum, turn the bypass switch to the up position. This starts the vacuum without running the rectifier assembly. Check your vacuum gauge. The vacuum gauge should read between 9 and 12 inches of mercury. Turn the red or orange valve knob to adjust the vacuum higher or lower as needed. After setting the vacuum, be sure to flip the bypass switch down to shut off the vacuum. Because different manufacturers' capsules vary, 
you may need to adjust your vacuum up or down from the specified 9 to 12 inches of mercury to achieve proper capsule separation. The speed of the rectifier determines the speed at which the filling ring on the rectifier table fills with empty capsules. To adjust the rectifier table speed, turn the dial located on the front panel. Changes in powder and capsule types can throw your capsule weights off too. Your company will specify what the weight of your capsule should be. If you're not meeting weight requirements, there are three ways to achieve correct capsule weights. One, you can adjust the auger speed. Two, adjust the fill table speed. And three, if your weights are still incorrect, you can increase or decrease the distance from the powder shoe to the rest shoe. The controls for the auger speed are located on the front panel. The faster the auger runs, the heavier your capsules will be, and the slower it runs, the lighter they will be. The table speed controls are also found on the front panel. The faster the table runs the ring, the lighter your weights will be, and the slower the table runs, the heavier they will be. Usually, finding the correct combination of auger speed and table speed will give you the desired capsule weights. But, if you are still not getting the correct capsule weights, you will need to change the distance from the powder shoe to the rest shoe. To do this, turn the machine power off. Check your clearance distance between the bottom of the powder shoe and the top of the rest shoe with a standard sheet of paper or a feeler gauge. The standard clearance distance is approximately three one-thousandths of an inch, about the width of a piece of paper. If there is too much clearance between the powder shoe and the rest shoe, loosen the two nuts and tighten the set screws on the powder shoe. Set your clearance and tighten the locking nuts just enough to ensure the shoe is in contact with the adjusting set screws. If there is not enough clearance between the powder shoe and the rest shoe, loosen the adjusting set screws and tighten the locking nuts on the new studs. Manually check your distances and resume your filling process. It is easier to make auger and table speed adjustments before you try to move the powder shoe. The Model 10 